But, Will, you know why we're here, man. We didn't think it was possible at all. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, but we destroyed the Dallas Cowboys in Crushed Week 18, 26-6, Will. Yeah. I- I'm going to be very honest with you real quick. I was kind of let down by this because when I saw them have all their starters in, yeah, I know. When I said I saw they had all their starters in, I was expecting the team that put up those 33 points in the fourth quarter against the Colts. You know what I mean? The team mm-hmm. that that was that worked us, you know, was passing all over us in the first game. This team was completely flat in, in the Cowboys. They didn't come out, even though they started their guys up to the fourth. I, I mean, they didn't look like they showed up at all. What do you think? Yeah, I, I was I was shocked too. Um, I, especially when the fact that they decided that they were going to play their starters, had they come in with, and, and not been playing Pollard and, and if you came out with Cooper rush and they had their starting offensive linemen were in there. Um, CD lamb was playing and I was like, mm-hmm. what, what is happening out here? This, it was, they, they laid a huge egg and I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how Cowboys fans are feeling, but I'd be nervous as all get out. Because uh, I can understand motivation. There was no, not a whole lot of motivation. You never really thought the Giants were going to beat the Eagles to, right. so that they would could win the division. But they came out and played like garbage. They were terrible. They were terrible. And see, another part of, again, why I was kind of just like, uh, a little bit, you know, if it wasn't for Sam Howell, it was kind of be an empty win is because not only did they play their starters, but we were without several of our starters. <laughs> Maybe a our lot. best defensive lineman, <laughs> Jonathan Allen, he wasn't there. Our uh, our draft pick from a year ago, Jamin Davis, he didn't play. Brian Robinson and Gibson both didn't play. We were down to Bonifin Williams and, and Jarrett Patterson running the ball. And then obviously the third string quarterback, Chris Paul. And the offensive hard. line, yeah. Right. Chris Paul. I didn't know that Norwell was hurt until right before the game. What? Right. He's not playing? So that's why, I, to me, it was kind of like I will always take a win, and, and definitely with who was at the helm, and we'll discuss that a little bit later, I always take that. I'm always excited about that, and it was always something nice when I got I get to sit there and talk to my Cowboys fans and be like, how we feeling? How we yeah, feeling, enough. boys? Are we them boys? <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, let's break this thing down. Like I said, they were flat, um, and there's one part that I want to just – just put my whole thing on, and it was the special teams for both sides. Uh, the special teams were absolutely that special in every sense of the word. Mm-hmm. We With them, you talk about anger, their punter, fumbling the snap, and, and Milo Eifler, Mr., Mr. True Mr. Irrelevant, coming uh-huh. in there and making a big, big play, which was solid. And then when we punt it uh, um, on, on the next our next drive after that, we punt it down there. Turpin fumbles it. We're able to get that. Start off with two short fields, and we were able to capitalize on one with a touchdown. The second one, um, not so much. But then you have to sit there, and this is why I'm saying it was special. Because at the same time, our punter, Tressway, did what he did, and he had three punts inside the 20. Uh, but he also outscored our quarterback, or out, out yarded gained our quarterback, uh, by almost 100 yards. He That's had 319. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't no. pretty. And then then the, the most special, and I mean that very sarcastically, the most special part of our special teams is that daggone Joey Sly, who's going to – you miss two field goals, mm-hmm. and then you miss a daggone extra point. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on now. It might be better than what we have had at some times because it got rough a year ago and we know his leg that he has, but that in another game would have reared his ugly head and it has all year. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was bad. He, he had himself a really, really bad ending to the season. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, early on in the game, I was you know, not that I guess, I mean, I, I predicted us to lose, but I still don't like to see when, if they're, if they have opportunity for points and you, you have opportunity for a rookie quarterback to get some yeah. momentum when you're not helping him out. You know that type of stuff. So yeah, it was it was a horrible game for 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 Joey. But you know who what it was a great game for was our defense. Yes. Yep. And it was the recipe that we had in October and November that brought us back from from 
where we were, the depths of the of a lost season, to to being at seven and five because the defense was outstanding. Yes. They were shutting down Tony Pollard again. You know, they were shutting down the, the pass game. Um, although I don't understand why that pick six from Dak. Why did he throw it back to the exact same place two plays right. in a row? That's a really head scratching. But that's play call. why. I, that's why I'm like you guys. What was going on? Like, I'm hoping that you just totally overlooked us like Janae tried to get me to believe. But that, he two times in a row? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But but the defense played well. And and yeah. one of the, the fun things about being out there was we were going to, you know, week 18 game when you're eliminated is you get to play some guys. And one of the guys that that really kind of flashed was was our rookie safety, Percy Butler. Yep. Who has not played anything but special teams, just like last year's rookie safety, Derek Forrest did nothing but play special teams. So it's kind of interesting. And Ron mentioned, you know, we were actually game planning him to have a bigger role this season, Percy Butler. He goes, and the emergence of, of Forrest kind of took him off the field. Mm-hmm. And so the injury to Cam Curl, they put him in, and, and he made some flashes. He, he plays downhill. Yes. He plays to be a thumper. You know, yeah. he, he's he, he's got some speed. So so that was kind of fun, fun to see. Um, they praised the play of, of linebacker Kaliki Hudson. Mm-hmm. We've been yeah. saying all year, like our, our linebacker depth is terrible. And this guy goes out and and, you know, he makes some tackles. He covers ground. He you know, Ron picked him out in his post game. I think he gave him a game ball to yeah. save for your play. So part of me is like, well, he's been on your practice squad all year. What, what are we doing? You know, like, where, where's this guy been? Why haven't we been, you know, elevating him earlier? So there was some some good plays. We'll get into some of the other, uh, you know, uh, you know, other other guys I want to highlight too. But but I, I was just I was impressed with the way the defense played with some of these guys that you can call them no names out there, and it's like hmm, they held their own pretty well against the Dallas starters. Exactly and exactly and 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 sticking with the defense, I'm not going to lie to you. And hey. Shout out to Jared. What up, fellas? I show up when we win. I show up when we lose. <laughs> Left hand up, my Respect. friend. Let's get it. <laughs> Respect, man. But, yeah, I, I, sticking with the defense, I, I, honestly, with the guys out that we said, like we, we, a lot of the starters and, and we're down to Kaliki Hudson and Mayo at linebacker, we held them the 64 yards on the ground on 27 carries. Yeah. And, and Pollard under 20. You had what yeah. Davis had like 19. He was their second leading rusher. And then you had Dak. And then you had Zeke, who had the most carries with eight and had 10 yards. I mean, we shut that running game down to a T. Like, and and you couple that with three sacks. We got what, like eight tackles for loss. Our defense showed up and showed out. And I mean, even if they did start playing or revving it up, our D, especially at front seven just put a clamp on it. And that yeah. was something that I thought was huge. Um, another one of the things that I want to uh, address, and I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come basically back to you because it's something we've talked about with it being, this was, I don't want to say it was a pre like a preseason game, but you, you're, this is the first time you're going to get this many guys that are second and third string or rookies in a game at that same time. And I mean, look, we got to shout these guys out. I mean, we're going to talk about Sam Howell in a little bit, but I mean, let's 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 go right here. Percy Butler, like you talked about with the four tackles and the pass deflection. Then you go to Jahan, who has been obviously in contention for rookie of the year, mm-hmm. only had four targets with three receptions, but 72 yards, a 24 yard average. We've saw we've seen there's a bunch where Hamill, uh, Howell sat there and hit him quick and then hit him in stride. So then all of a sudden he's running up the field and it's like, woo, OK, OK, I love that. Our running game, we had what Williams, Bonifant, these guys who are, are young, but still being able to seriously move the ball on a defense that many have touted as a top 10, if not top five. So, and, and O-line, Chris Paul getting there. The fact that our rookies came mm-hmm. out and and showed up, I mean, let, let's be honest, they, sh- they played big when they were given the opportunity um, what do you think? Because I, I was really impressed with what our rookies did. Absolutely. Well, and it's one of those things where – so I've been hearing a lot about Chris Paul at practice, mm-hmm. um, and it's been a lot of the players talking about him, saying, hey, this guy's kind of tough to go up against. You know, and so – but 
when are you going to put him in? You know, and some of it had to do, you know, we're in the middle of the playoff run, so you're not going to insert him. And no one was really that that hurt um, that we needed to put him in. So it would these are these are very advantageous situations, you know, mm-hmm. to to play your guys and, and let them see. And Paul made some plays. He, he you know he he made some good blocks. He got downfield a couple times. Mm-hmm. You know, we did run the ball a lot. I think we had like 41 carries. And one of the complaints a lot from from the the analysts and media afterwards is like, seriously, you got a rookie quarterback in here and all we got was 19 passes? Right. Like, <laughs> like at the very end of the game, like, do you really need to run the ball three times and then and end the game? Or why don't you give him a chance in the red zone to, right. to try and score points? You know, they're like, because well, he needs this practice. Um, so – I, I think that was that's kind of funny if you think about it. Uh, but there were there was a lot of rookies. John Ridgeway played well until yes. unfortunately I think he tore his pec. They uh. said so he's you know he's going to have a you know a slow start to his off season. But yeah. you know Ridgeway got the start and was making plays against the team that drafted him. Yeah. Um, there was another defensive tackle. Never heard this guy before. Oh. P- potato, or pe- yeah, yeah, potato, <laughs> yeah, Benning Potoea. Yeah, potato. I saw the hair. I saw the. Hair. But he was around. At one point, I thought he was. I thought he was Chase Young out there making plays. Right. Oh, is that, is that Chase? Oh no, that's that's somebody else. Okay, make this, this guy. guy. Right. You know, he kind of flashed at times too. So so it was great. You know, and 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 collectively, you know, that those young set of guys out there. I'm gonna take your stat. Four of eighteen on third downs were the. There we go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> you know, that's huge. That's shutting them down. Yeah. So it, it was good. That that type of stuff is fun to see. You know, in a meaningless game, if you can see some of your young players making plays, you know, the Hudson flash. So you got Paul flashing. You got some of the young guys on defense flashing. We have a quarterback who flashed mm-hmm. many times in the game and yeah. showed the potential, you know, that, that he's got. So we can walk away into the offseason on a really, really big high. Which is always nice. Um, and it's yeah. also in a trend that Ron's had. The last three final games of the season, he's been winning. Ron's teams don't quit at the end. We keep yeah. saying that. But, you know, they play hard. And there's a testament there to get the guys that much ready to go for for a game that doesn't matter with so many folks who are in there for the first time. So you do got to give some credit to these coaches for the game plan and, and installation that they had. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And Jerry, we will definitely address this. Let's cut the malarkey because we're, dra- we're very need to bounce. Oh, yeah. That we'll is a talk about that. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So stick with us. Uh, but I like this. What he said. I think something needs to be said that no NFC East team handled uh, no NFC East team that handled backup QBs really well. It's clearly affected the opposing defense. Oh, Rush, Minshew, Heineken, and Hal all got W's. Yeah, they they came in like you said. Uh, they came in and they started and they did exactly what they needed to do. They took advantage of their opportunity. You talk about how um, how getting the W, um, Minshew coming in there, rush like you said, mm-hmm. and then Heineke was five three and one. You know, shout out to those guys making the best of their opportunity, and and it also shows how much. I mean, the schedule helped no doubt, but it shows how much we've kind of turned things around in the sense that if all of us, even our second team is playing still playing well still playing up to par that's huge for the nfc east we're not the joke like we've been over the last couple years right no longer nfc least yeah i like that yeah i like yeah. that uh what's up guys? Nicole. Sorry, I, had to admit, I rolled a dice in the game but it came out as washington okay okay <laughs> had, to, had to take you off the show for the first time because you talked about dallas yesterday but i still love you don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yo yo so hey like you say it's a great game great way to end the season beating our rival 26 to 6 thanks for watching if you like that clip be sure to check out the other great content from the let's talk football community and as always please like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available